Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at Cooley's Reel. <laughs> Today we're going to look at Cooley's reel and with particular reference to the bowing. So I'm going to show you quite a few different approaches to bowing on this tune. It's a useful tune to know because it's very widely played and also having only two chords it's a good one for that situation where some guitarist or piano player says play as a tune and I'll play along with you <laughs> and you've got a pretty good idea that they've not much idea what they're going to do. So if there's only two chords there's a good chance that they won't make a mess of it. You may say this is a very cynical view, and uh, yes it is. Okay, so let's first of all look at just the melody and not think about the bowing at all. And in fact we'll do the whole thing with separate bows. And we'll have a post-mortem at the end of that to see what went wrong. So, uh, moderate to slow tempo, starting with a down and no slurring at all. One, two, three, four... <laughs> Now that to my ear was uh, pretty awful. <laughs> uh, it has no drive whatsoever, it has no lift to it and um, it's extremely inconsistent. So if you start off with the first bar then having no slurs means you start the next bar with an up bow and then a down and an up and then the first bar, which you have already played starting with a down, is now coming with an up. So, in terms of muscle memory for learning the phrases, this is pretty useless. Um, so, you want to have some consistency. So, if you're starting the first bar with a down bow, then you really want to start that bar again when it comes in bar 5, also with a down bow. So, that's one good reason why you're going to have slurs. Um, the second thing is that the one effect of slurs is to give you drive. And if you make an assumption that your down bows are, it's easier to make them strong than it is the up bows. You want to make sure that the notes that you want to drive are, are on down bows. So let's make some simple adjustments. Uh, version 2 now, we're going to put the minimum of slurs in which allows you to place an accent and a down bow on on the 1 and the 3. 3, 4... So you can see now has quite a better feel to it. Let's do the same thing with the backing. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
So that works fairly well and um, if you speed that up even more that will sound better still. Uh, but it's a bit predictable putting the accent on It's more interesting sometimes if you put the beat not on the one and the three but on the two and the four. Just the bowing to make that possible. So we're again going to assume that the strong beats are going to come from a down bow uh, and to do that we're going to start off with a slurred up bow. And notice that because we're slurring across the bar line on the same note uh, then we have to put a little um, grace note in to separate those two notes over the bar line. So that like that. So a completely different set of bowings and a completely different set of accents. Uh, either on the one and the three as, as we did first or on the two and the four which is sometimes called the backbeat. Some tunes lend themselves naturally to one or to the other. Um, and frustratingly I'm not going to tell you which is the best <laughs> in, this, in this case. Um, that's up to you to decide. What we're going to try next is a mixture of different bowings um, and different accents and this is something more like what I would uh, do naturally. Um, so we're going to have some accents on the on and some on the off and we're going to slur across the bar line some and we're going to slur more within the bars. So if you look at um, one of the bars near the end then that's um, two, uh, lots of three slurred, and um, so we're trying to get quite a lot of slurring in, which will allow it to be smooth and fast if we want it fast. So let's do this uh, new bowing, what I call mixed bowing, and we'll do it with the backing slow and then with the backing fast. So the version we've just played is more like the ideal of Irish fiddle which is where the phrase determines what accents and bowing you're going to use rather than deciding at the beginning that it's going to be all, uh, all the accents in one place 
or all the accents in another place. It's much more musical if you can make those decisions as you're going along. And if all if this all sounds extremely complicated and long-winded, well it is. Um, <laughs> learning to make those Boeing decisions for yourself um, is the work of five years or ten years. It's not the work of uh, a few minutes. So, um, they, if, you, if you just want to learn this tune and play it, then learn the, the, the last version that I'm about to play, which is the same as we've just done, but with some ornamentation, and that's all you need to know if that's as far as you want to go. But um, if you want to really understand Boeing, then I suggest that you go back through these exercises and try the same exercises on different reels, and you'll see that um, you're making then kind of informed decisions as, as opposed to just random decisions. So if you'd like a copy of all the docs for this lesson, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. If you'd like to receive a zip file with the PDFs for all of my videos, which is uh, over 350 of them, then do join me on Patreon. And one of the benefits of joining me on level 3 is a one-to-one uh, -one Zoom lesson from myself. Incidentally, Cool is Real is very often played as a partner with The Wise Maid. And on my Patreon, I'm going to do both of those tunes together. You can do them either uh, Coolies into Wise Made or Wise Made into Coolies. Uh, so check me out, check that out on Patreon. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll play you out with this ornamented version. See you again soon.